I want you all to picture that you're a 35-year-old woman, which may be a stretch for some of you. You're Scottish, ginger, and you have eyes that you swear aren't green. You keep recipes tucked in your wrist just out of your sleeve and the knowledge of rustic camel saddles in your mind. You're married, happily, to a philosopher who believes in time travel and gentle woolen jumpers and keeps kindness lodged in his beard. You have one daughter who dreams of ladybirds at night and looks nothing like you, but you're actually pregnant with another. Now, I want you to imagine that your husband suffers a second stroke in his life. The first left him paralyzed, the second kills him. You are now a single and pregnant mother, and it only takes one trip down Google to know the stereotypes. Fast forward three months. You still live in the house of the Dalmatian next door, but your, second daughter, your older daughter is killed in a school shooting. You have now lost half your family in under six months. Now, I don't have to picture or imagine this because the woman I just described is my mother. I have no memories of my sister and I never met my father. So, how? How do we cope with this and why? Why am I smiling and doing poems at an audience in Edinburgh? Because if there's one song that would sum up my life, it would be the Friends theme tune. Especially the part where they go, so no one told you life was gonna be this way. <laughs> yes! Yes! I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I'm trying to play it cool, but that was awesome. The reason that I am here today is performance poetry. Because I'm already a philosophy student, so I thought that adding poet onto that would really help me fulfill my lifetime goal, which is to be the family disappointment who'll never make money. <laughs> there are three reasons that performance poetry has helped me cope with these situations and on some days got me out of bed. The first is that through writing poetry about my mental health, about the fact that I suffer from OCD, depression and I lost half my family before I could even talk, I've had to sit with a metaphorical magnifying glass and really examine my language. Think about how I feel and how to best convey that to an audience clearly so that they understand what I'm going through. This means I've become extremely self-literate, so I know exactly when I'm having a bad day and how to cope with it and what steps to take to ensure that I don't have another bad day. The second thing is that it means I have been able to convey myself very quickly to both loved ones and professionals. And this meant that I got the help I needed when I needed it very quickly. The second thing I want to say about performance poetry is I have met some of the best people in my life. I have built a network of kind and supportive people who have acted both as a launching pad and as a safety net. And they've opened my eyes to all kinds of art. And we all know art is a very good resource for the tough times. And when I say art, I do definitely most include Blackadder and Mad Max Fury Road. <laughs> Only with poets would you decide that this is a good idea. Packing up your flat after flying back from France, then going down to London on four hours sleep with a broken toe and being the sound and lighting technician for a show despite having no previous experience. <laughs> this is why I am a poet. <laughs> the third thing I want to say about performance poetry is I have had some of the most valuable experiences in my life. I will get on stage and I'll do a poem about mental health. And someone in the audience might come to me and say something like, I really like this line, it really summed up how I feel. Now, this is why poets don't get paid, because we'll always find your words so much more valuable. I mean, I like, wouldn't complain about getting money, <laughs> but this has been one of the most beneficial things for my mental health, because the worst thing about depression for me is the sheer and unmovable belief that I am worth nothing. So an audience member saying to me that they've identified with something I've had to say makes me feel like I'm not doing too bad today. To know that they're inspired, to go and get help or to call a friend or just the fact they might carry something I've said like a song lyric in their head makes me feel pretty good. So here's what I want you to take away. Start writing. It's okay if it's haikus or limericks or even fan fiction, write it down. So long as it's not like Twilight fan fiction because I don't <laughs> want to inspire that. <laughs> Consider performing and paying attention to your words, redrafting and then re-re-redrafting because through doing this you will very quickly change your outlook and this will change your world. If we went back in time three years, there is no way I would be doing this because my confidence through doing this has come on exponentially. No matter what you have to say, there will always be an audience member who identifies with exactly what you are thinking. I will never, never say that this is a cure, but it is a way to cope and it has always worked for me.